What's up everyone? This is Teacher Del at muli po tayong bumabalik sa ating pangalawang leksyon under sa PEG of the Week or Pinoy English Grammar of the Week. Ngayon po ang ating pong leksyon na ikukumpara sa parts of speech at sa bahagi ng pananalita ay ang pronouns or panghalip. Ngayon, umpisahan natin muli sa definition o kahulugan ng pronoun o panghalip. Pronoun is a word that replaces a noun in a sentence. Pronouns are used to avoid repeating the same nouns over and over again. So just like this example, Sarah bought five pieces of apples. She sliced each apples into four and gave it to her sisters. Now, instead of saying, Sarah bought five pieces of apples, Sarah sliced each apples into four and gave it to her sisters, then uh, we replaced Sarah with the pronoun she. And we also have the pronoun her. Ang panghalip ay salitang humahalili o pamalit sa ngalan o pangalan na nagamit na sa parehong pangusap o kasunod na pangusap. Ang salitang panghalip ay nangangahulugang panghalili o pamalit. Okay, ginawa ka na bang pamalit? Charot lang. Okay, so just like that, uh, with our sentence Sarah, so pinalitan ang Sarah ng she. O kung sa uh, Filipino yun, yun yung maging uh, niya. Okay, let's have here. Bumili si Sarah ng limang mansanas, hiniwa niya ang bawat isa sa apat, at ibinigay niya ito sa kanyang mga kapatid. So, instead na sabihin na Sarah, paulit-ulit, ginawa itong niya. Okay, tayo naman ay tutungo sa mga uri ng panghalip or types of pronouns. Now, let's go to the first one, personal pronoun or panghalip na pantangi. Personal pronouns is used as a substitute for a person's name. So, from the name it is personal. There are two kinds, subjective and objective pronouns. That is, they either act as the subject of the sentence or the object of the sentence. While, pangtangi, panghalili sa ngala ng tao. Just like that, maari itong gamitin bilang simuno at tagaganap. So, let's take a look at some examples. Here, subject, object. Pag uh, ikaw yung subject, if you are the subject, then you use I. Okay, so um, I've noticed a lot of errors when it comes to uh, using this pronoun as a subject and an object. Uh, for example, in a narrative essay, um, somebody's going to say, uh, My friends and me went to the party. So the subject is my friends and me so instead of saying my friends and me it should be my friends and i okay also there are some errors when they say i and my friends it should be my friends and i okay my friends and i and then if you are the doer of the action or the receiver of the action then you can use me Okay, and let's go sa pantangi. Simuno, ako, ikaw, siya, tayo, kami, kayo, at sila. Tagaganap, no, the, receive, uh, the doer of the action or also the receiver of the action. Ko, mo, niya, natin, namin, ninyo, nila. Okay. Let's go to the second one. Possessive pronoun o paari. Okay, so in possession, this shows Ownership or possession of a noun. So, my, our, your, his, her, its, their. Okay, so its is used for uh, the possession, a possession or a part of an object. For example, the hood of the car. So, its hood. So, its refers to the car. We also have what we call the independent possessive pronouns, which can stand alone. So, if uh, someone asks, Whose bag is this? Then you can just say, mine, you know, or it's ours, yours, his, hers, it's, theirs. Okay, so those are called independent possessive pronouns. Napunta naman po tayo sa, taga, sa Filipino. Pumapalit sa pangalang nagpapakita ng pag-aari. Okay, ownership, possession. Yan, so we have there, akin, iyo, kanya. 
kapag maramihan atin, amin, inyo, kanila. Yan. Like we have here, uh, some tips kung paano natin malalaman na ang na ito ay isang panghalip na paari. Lagi, lagi itong nakikita sa bahaging panaguri o pagkatapos ng panandang ay at sa unaan ng pangusap kung walang ay. Hindi ito dapat sinusundan ng pangalan. Again, so minsan, uh, yung iba akala nila ang isang uh, pag sinabing kanyang aking kaibigan siya ay aking kaibigan so hind ang aking or a k i n g ito ay sinundan ng pangalan ito po ay hindi na tinatawag na paari kundi ito ay tinatawag ng panuring akin ay panghalip pero pag sinabing aking ito na ay panuring hindi na siya pari na panghalip okay aking damit. Ang damit ay akin. So yun, pwede yun tawagin na paari. Pero pag sinabing aking damit, yun na ay panuring. Hindi na po yun paari. Okay, so let us proceed to the next one. Interrogative pronouns o pananong. They work in sentences that are possessing a question. So who, whom, which, what, whoever, whomever, whichever, whatever. Yeah, whatever that is. Okay? Pananong, pama, pamamalit sa pangalan sa paraang patanong. Of course. So, meron tayong isahan, maramihan. Sino? Sino-sino? Pag marami. Sino ang kumain ng mansenas? So, isang tao lang yun. Okay, let's go to the third one. Demonstrative or pamatlig. Demonstrative take the place of a noun that's already been mentioned. Okay, so this, those, this, that, such. Pamatlig naman, humahalili sa ngalan ng bagay at iba pa na itinuturo o inihihimaton. Okay, so uh, it's not directly the same, pero it's quite related to each other. Okay, so pag sinabi natin these, so marami. These marami, uh, there's a lot of it and you're uh, holding it. These. Uh, these flowers, you're holding the flowers. So, ito yan. Sa Filipino, ito. Yan. Pag hinahawakan mo, malapit sa'yo, ito, ganito, dito, heto. Iyan, ganyan, dyan, hayan. Uh, so, medyo malapit. Medyo malapit lang. Okay, katabi, pero hindi hinahawakan. Uh, iyon, ganoon, doon, hayun. So, ayun, malap uh, malayo na siya. Eh, yun yung mga pamatlig natin. So, here in English, uh, these, uh, plural, you're holding it. Uh, those, plural, but it's far away from you. You're trying to point it out. This, singular siya. At hawak mo rin. That, singular and um, malayo, far away. And such, is like um, ganito such uh, uh, ang such parang ganito or eto or ito ayan relative so relative take the place of a noun that's already been mentioned so parang pareho siya ng interrogative right however um it is referring back to what is already mentioned. Like we have here the example. The driver who ran the stop sign was careless. So who here is taking the place of the driver? Number two, I don't know which part of shoes you, uh, which pair. I don't know which pair of shoes you want. So which. So it's trying to refer to the pair of shoes. Take whichever ones you want. So whatever that is. So, whichever. Tungo naman tayo sa pamanggit. Ginagamit bilang tagapag-ugnay ng dalawang pananalita. So, just like what we have here in relative pronoun. So, dalawa lamang po ang pamanggit sa Filipino. Ito ay ang na at nang. So, example. Ang babae na nanalo ay sa barangay namin nakatira. Ang paa ng kalabaw ay malalaki. So, nang dito... Uh, nagre-refer siya sa kalabaw na nanalo sino nanalo yung babae 
Okay? Let's go to indefinite pronouns o panaklaw, panghalip na panaklaw. We use them when an object doesn't need to be specifically identified. So, few, everyone, all, some, anything, nobody. So, ayan. So, a few people went inside the hall. Okay? So, there's no definite. So, it's indefinite. There's no specific numbers identified. So, everyone was there. All of us were as, as, apa, all of us were a surprised. So how many are you? We don't know. It's just all of you. Some, anything, nobody. So panaklaw, nagsasaad ng dami o bilang ng tao o bagay na nasasaklaw ng kilos. So dami, pero hindi rin po uh, uh, tiyak yung kung gaano sila karami. So ito, lahat, alinman, sinuman, ni isa, madla. So of course, ni isa is none. Nobody. Madla. Everyone. Lahat. All. Alin man. Anything. Ayan, mga sino man. Okay. So, yan lamang po ang ating leksyon paukol sa pronouns o panghalip. Kung may mga question pa po kayo at iba pa pong gustong malaman about sa pronouns o panghalip, mag-comment lamang po sa ibaba ng video na ito. Of course, marami pa po tayong ibang uh, uri or types of pronouns, pero pinili lamang po natin yung merong kaakibat o uh, ka-equivalent po sa Filipino. So, yan lamang po. And this is once again, Teacher Del, signing off.